Hey, what's good, everyone? Local Ice Man here. When I got a box right here, it's something special. It's something that we wanted for a long time. It's something that we talked about it for a long time. We didn't know Zaboni had it until about a year and a half ago, which is this taller board brush. Now, we always thought that the traditional board brush that came with the machine didn't do a good job of getting along the kick strip. Now, I'll show you a side by side here with this brush and the old brush and what it looks like. But we always thought that they should come with a cylindrical board brush that kind of gets up along the kick strip because as the kick strip gets all beat up and scratched up, the snow sticks to it and as you also as people stop along the player benches or in the corners and if they do conditioning drills you get powder that builds up along the kick strip and the traditional brush all it really does is just get the powder off the ice kind of against the kick strip where the machine the conditioner and the blade can't really get to but it doesn't really clean the the kick strip itself so this will do a, hopefully a good job of clean the kick strip of all the powder that's sticking on there as you go by so it doesn't make it as hard to chip all right so i guess we should go through the box right here make sure everything's in it then we'll go over and walk over to the machine and start swapping out this brush for the other brush and maybe i want to open these everything up right here i just want to make sure we got everything that looks like in the package so we got here is a adapter that's number three that's gonna call it that, that little bushing right there that looks like the same type of taper bushing that's on a horizontal auger shaft. Um, what's that, number three? Bushing, bore, and number four, adapter. Because as this thing screws into this thing, that should tighten up. So that little guy's right there. We got some long bolts. Looks like this is probably that right there. Let's kind of see what's in this box right here. guessing that's that right there and that faces this way this is probably the little taper deal yeah it looks really similar to the horizontal auger shaft where the the chain fits on all right let's go ahead and walk over to the machine and take the old broad brush off and start setting everything up slap this new one on So we got three half inch bolts we're gonna pull out right here. Get this old brush off. Okay, there we go, there's the old board brush, flange right here. Make sure you put these bolts back in and keep this flange because who knows if you're ever gonna swap back to it. And I'm just saying the brush does have a top and bottom. So as you can see right here, these brushes are facing straight out and these brushes are kind of angled downward. So there is orientation on it. There's an up and down. So I got this thing right here. I guess it's gonna go right there. Lay all these out nice and easy. Collar and some bolts in here. Three long, three short. I got this collar right here, this piece right here. This only fits one way, so it's gotta face up. That's gonna be in top right there like that. This piece right here comes from the bottom with three long bolts. This little three-hole deal with three long bolts and three washers. It doesn't seem to be a top or bottom on that one, so. I'm assuming that those screw into those bolts that are welded onto that right there. Just like that but before you screw those on so next thing we gotta do is take this mounting bracket off with the old board brush so there's three bolts down here you gotta take off and you can see there's the motor shaft We've got three 7 16 screws or bolts all right again you probably want to save these things all right good time to clean this thing off jesus with it let me get some spray to spray in there because i don't think that's gonna come out really easy I don't know if that's even an Allen key. Yeah, I feel threads in there. Did it come out? Should have been a set screw in there, but there is not a set screw in there. I don't know. I still can't quite figure that one out. I'm just gonna proceed with caution. I just don't want to start yanking on this stuff. All right, I threw some blocks on here so I can take the pressure off the hydraulic ram. snap right off.
Yeah, those are snuck right off, man. I'm not doing that. This tapered collar is really giving me a hard time, and I don't want to try to get up underneath it. So I'm just going to take these two bolts off. There's a, a nut and a bolt right here. Take these off, get this motor off. I'm just going to use an 18 millimeter on a bolt right there, or 11 sixteenths would work just fine. Get the motor off. That way I can flip it upside down and get a better look at this. Got to clean these holes up somehow. Now, when you take these things off and you unscrew the plate from this collar here, you're supposed to screw the three bolts back into here. And as you screw them in, they're going to push against the back collar and separate these two pieces right here. But there's so much corrosion that I can't really get the bolts in there. I think they're going to snap right off. Uh, Don said to get a, this is not a flat one, but Don said to get a, a tap and kind of clean it out in there. But I'm going to give that a shot before I get the bearing puller out and just kind of yank it off. I don't have a bottom end tap. See how this one here has a, a flat end versus that right there. This is one so you get all the way down to the bottom. I think there's some space behind. I can still get that in there. Worst comes to worst, I can always cut that off. Ideally, you want to spray some lube on there when you do this. Let's go ahead and see if that threads in any easier. I think I might have to clean off. The bolt's pretty corroded too. Clamp that down on the vise and use this wire brush to clean out all the gunk in the channel there. Let's go see if these things thread in a little easier. I hate these taper locks, man, because once they're locked together, it's so hard to get off. There, I'm tired of messing around. I got the bearing puller on. I just used two of the sides instead of the three. Let's go ahead and get me a socket on there. I think I'm on my end here. There we go. So this is what I was trying to get off, this little tapered lock. And I didn't think that there was a set screw in there. Was there? Nope, no set screw. How come there's no set screw? That's odd. Let's go ahead and clean this thing up. I kind of want to get this thing back on it, a little untwisted. Right there. I want to get this thing cleaned up here a little bit, I guess. So we have it off. I think we're officially at the halfway point. I think I'm going to get this other collar on before I, I bolt this on. Might as well, since we have everything here. So, this is what we got put on next. There is a set screw in there. I've confirmed that. So how the instructions here has it set up. It's going to be, this is on facing upward. And it doesn't fit in that way, it only fits in one way. This guy right here with the three bolts. And these three bolts slip through these holes right here. And they bolt in, you gotta make sure that you get the open holes, these three open holes right here, one, two, three, are lined up with the threads. Because that's what you're going to bolt it to. I'm going to loosely put it all together here. Right, what I got here is a flat washer with the shorter screw with the thread lock going through this plate. And these little bolts that have been welded onto this plate has to face downward because that's where your board brush screws into. And you have the, the tapered collar and the locking collar. As you tighten it down, this uh, silver part is going to pinch on the black part here and see where that little break is right there. It's going to pinch it together, clamp it down on the shaft. So now we've got to do slide this thing onto the shaft. You can see right there, that's where the little keyway goes right there. Go slide this bad boy on. Oh yeah, right there. That looks good. Put this down on here so I have everything nice and set. I'm gonna do the rest of this from here. Let me go ahead and put these bolts back on so it's nice and secured. Alright. Got the motor back on. It wasn't necessary, but it was easier for me. Right, let's go ahead and get this locking collar on. Make sure you tighten these things sequentially. I'm using the right word. So there's an old collar, so that's the gap that's in between both pieces. So the gap that I got seems about right. Go ahead and give it a final tight. All right, let's go ahead and tighten that set screw right there. The 764th Allen key wrench deal. Tighten that up. All right, you got that on. I think that was the hardest part was getting that collar off. Now we got it 
the new one on. Let's go ahead and continue on with the instructions here. The new tapered collar came with bolts. Make sure you save these things. You're gonna use these things to separate them and you take it off in the future. Now they're not used in the installation process like the other one. On the other one, the, those bolts were keeping this plate onto the collar. So what I did is I, because I want to save everything just in case we flop back and forth. So this board brush, the old mounting hardware, I'm going to keep. See, these bolts right here actually bolt into the taper collar here, whereas the, the instructions kind of show that you're not really using those bolts right here, but you want to keep them just in case. So I'm going to put everything back together here. That way, if you ever need it, we have it. So now we're left with this guy right here, three bolts and three lock-in washers. So let's take the lock-in washers and slide them on these long bolts. A four inch, 15th, 16th, 18th thread. It doesn't really matter which way it goes. And make sure you get your brush pointed the right way with the bristles on the bottom are facing down and the bristles on the top are kind of facing straight. Just gonna back this back over here now. So what I'm gonna do is I get two four by fours and a two by four just to get it up in the air. Let's go ahead and just place the brush there. Got this guy, but I think I'm gonna deal with a couple bolts at a time. Let me get my socket nice and ready here. And half inch will do it. I'm just gonna get one bolt threaded. Oh, look at that. That looks so awesome already. Second one. I'm kind of doing this part blind, kind of hoping that they line up. On the old one, you can at least see. Just kind of want to tighten them a little bit together. As you tighten one, the other ones become a little loose. Just make sure you keep going around until you get them all nice and snug. All right, let's go ahead and switch views right here and take a look at this thing. Oh, look at that, that's nice. All right, so there she is. Take a picture right there, take another picture. Power brush. There is the old brush right there. There's a new brush. You can't really compare them, man. Like. I, I sometimes I wonder why they would even ship a machine with this type of brush on it. I guess it comes down to price, and each rink is trying to pay as little as amount as possible. So if you include everything on the machine, it makes it that more expensive. So they start low and put all these add-ons. But this right here, I don't remember it being an option seven years ago or eight years ago when we got this machine. I didn't see it on the list of options, or I probably would definitely would have gotten it. That board brush right there. It's gonna work if you're an ice skating rink, or excuse me, a figure skating rink, perhaps maybe speed skating, public skate. But if you're a hockey rink and have tons of hockey going on, this is the brush you want to go. I haven't even tested it yet, but I know it's gonna work. I'll get some video here of it if it going after the junior practice today. But it's pretty um, night and day right here. The one reason why I decided to switch to the power brush other than it, it's just gonna be better, is that it was time to get a new board brush. I knew it was gonna be spending like 65 bucks on that board brush, and this right here, the whole kit was $400, and it comes with the board brush. Now, I believe the brush itself is about $200. I'll go ahead and include that in the link in the description below, how much both these things cost just to replace the board brush itself. But if I was gonna replace this thing for 65 bucks, I might as well just upgrade it and put that 65 towards the newer board brush system that way i'm not wasting too much money i had to get something already so might as well invest it towards something better this is going to work out really good for us and go ahead and comment below if you guys have the power brush or you have the regular brush and which one you use and, and your thoughts and opinions on the board brush and the board brush itself is an add-on it's a few thousand dollars extra not every machine comes with it if you have a rink that doesn't have boards, I guess an outside rink, it doesn't have boards, you don't really need a board brush. A board brush is really if you have boards, but I think this brush right here is the way to go if you're in a hockey rink. All right, I think that's all I have for you guys today. Thanks for watching. As always, hope you learned something. Like the localized man says, stay cool.